Hi, I'm Patty Cake, and this is my best friend, Brent. We've been besties for a while now, and one of the things we bonded over was our shared love of Mad Libs. On Christmas a few years ago, Brent pitched the idea to me to create a show where we use AI art to accentuate the humor of Mad Libs. Three weeks later, we started filming, and we haven't stopped since. Through this project, we hope to share our weird humor and to highlight both the unexpected beauty and complete absurdity of AI-generated art. Welcome to Mid-Journey Mad Libs. Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new, please come in and make yourself at home. My name is Patty Cake, and welcome to Patty Cake Games and another episode of Mid Journey Mad Libs. And with me, as always, is my best friend and co host, Brent. How are you today? I, I am amazing, even though, like, I didn't get much sleep last night because I took too many Adderall the day before. Well, that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> I've got clearly Canadian, and that's the best part. <laughs> All right, we're not going to waste any time. You guys know how this works. We send each other Mad Libs. We send each other the answers to go into the Mad Libs. We then take those sentences. We run them through mid-journey. We create art. We get together. We share it with each other. And we laugh. And that's the show. And we hope you like it. And if you do like it, look down below the video. There's a button just for you. It's a thumbs up. It means you like the video. And if you're, if you're going to click on that, I mean, you might as well just click on subscribe. It's right next to it. It takes just like a little tiny bit of effort to one more time and uh, that really helps out the channel and i mean all the cool kids are doing it so you should do it right don't you don't you you know you want to then if you want to be super thorough you can ring the notification bell that lets you know when new videos get posted to the channel so you don't miss anything also look down below the video in the description there is a link to the discord come join the discord and hang out with us it'd be cool we'd love to chat with people uh but you're first tonight brent and i am dying to know what this pseudo Rick Baker zombie bust thing is all about. Because I kind of dig it, to be honest. <laughs> well, it's the second um, story I've done from this Mad Lib. It's the Gross Me Out Mad Libs. Um, I'm still waiting to get the grossy gross out, but let's <laughs> go for it. See what happens. How newborn can you get? Well, you can't really get newborn again, as far as I know. <laughs> This totally, <laughs> this totally looks like a teenage or young, not teenage, maybe just maybe tween Six boy, or seven, maybe yeah, eight, yeah. trying to be, <laughs> trying to be a newborn. <laughs> and he okay. crawled inside the laundry basket. <laughs> Grow your flower-scented deodorant goodbye. Oh, okay, that kind of fit. Toss your nose brush in the trash, Ew. and follow these steps for extreme. Grossness. <laughs> is she preparing for holy? Uh, I don't know. I think maybe that's what she uses for her nose brush. So we're all thinking <laughs> nose brush, like something you would like brush the inside of your nose with. Right. And Mid Journey decided it's it's a makeup brush, which uh, does make a little more sense. It does make a little more sense. That could also just be powdered soap, so it might be flower scented soap. But it, it kind of already looks gross. It, it does. It's it's the color is off-putting. <laughs> Number one, build up some allergic bo. When you get home from pollen practice or sneezing outside, skip showering. Ooh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it kind of looks like something splattered all over her, and she's and it's funny to her. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, you know, maybe she was standing behind somebody while they were trying to get their car. And yeah, out of the off. mud or something, and it splashed up on her, and then, like, someone took a picture, and she's laughing about it, you know? Wait, wait, wait. let me fix my hair first. <laughs> right, because her hair's kind of nice. Because there's, there's actually <laughs> stuff underneath her bang. Right, so she brushed it down on top, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Either that or she's, she has just a lot of moles, and she bought an outfit. <laughs> she bought an outfit that has moles on it. So that it it looks like it's you know an intentional fashion choice. I don't know. I'm very uncomfortable now. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a loofah and garden berry bubble bath? <laughs> Not you. Another perfect word. Kind of garden berry bubble bubble bath. Not That's you. Kind of funny. Not me. No. No. Nope. Not you. <laughs> this is the least elaborate. 
<laughs> and, the, and three of them were also going with their arms spread out. Interesting. But this is kind of humorous in that it almost looks like she's taking a bath in balloons. In balloons. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I took a bath. See? <laughs> she's just getting her dirty VO all over those balloons. Now. <laughs> Chew your food like a baby bird. Oh. With your fluffy cottontail wide open. <laughs> so, wow. Oh, that's almost so great. Every one of them gave me cute little bunnies. Okay. Um, I did get one woodchuck with its mouth wide open, <laughs> but this one was just so like unexpected. It's like, there's a face on his shoulder. Yeah, it's like a llama. It's like the head of a llama or <laughs> something. Like an alpaca is at dinner <laughs> with him. Send chunks of salad flying with every bite. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> He's on a condor, I think. <laughs> or it's like a condor slash eagle. Slash, and it's got slash a griffin because it has four legs. Oh yeah, one of them looks like it's missing a talon. <laughs> but I'm like, this—it's the only it's one that like, came up anything like that. You know what? This needs to be a motivational poster <laughs> <laughs> with some bullshit phrase at the bottom. <laughs> you know that one is it? Uh, you can't soar with the eagles if you keep hanging around on the ground with the turkeys, right? <laughs> and Something it looks like a little that. like both, or even just <laughs> even just the generic chase your dreams. <laughs> and don't forget to rain and chew at the same time. Well, they're prepared for the rain. They got a nice little umbrella above them. Um, I how, guess it's suspended how, from the tree. I guess. How interesting, though, that the lions all gather for, you know, a nice little wine outing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the employee area at the safari park. Oh, okay. They chased them <laughs> off. <laughs> No, no, the they are the employees. Oh, oh yeah, okay. They, I get so, it. you know, they're they're not out in the savannah right now. They're in the, they're hiding back there. <laughs> yes. I ain't having to act all mean all the time. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Got gas? Save it for the next go kart ride on your way to school. Roll the windows up and procreate. In the car? Right. On the way to school? On the go kart? That's not safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a cool go kart though. I got a bit. I'm like, it's pretty damn cool. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been in a go kart that had windows to go up. Me either. No, they're wide open. That's when you said when you have gas, you know, take the go, you save it for the go kart. It's like, yeah, because you're not in an enclosed space, so you can just let yeah. it fly, and no one will know that you farted. But you know, but yeah, I dig this. So this looks like a homemade contraption. It does, and it also looks a little Mad Maxian. Maybe oh, if yeah. like if. Like instead of Mad Max like, was in Vermont. Well, yeah. Like instead of like the deserts <laughs> of Australia, it's like what happened in the post-apocalypse in like Vermont. <laughs> you know, you end up with these sorts and, of gangs. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the, the yeah, it's the it's the Maple Cartel. <laughs> right. Nice. Step and gum. Wake it up. Now the real question is, is it falling into her mouth or is she spitting it into the bowl? <laughs> or yeah. Or she's just kind of doing that. I don't know. I'm trying to do like sexy, and I'm like, this is not uh, working. Not, for it's you. not working. No, not working for me. Also, where are her arms? Oh, yeah, you're right. Like that one so, hand. Does one her hand, boob have a hand? Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. It's like one hand. It could. I mean, it goes off 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 camera, so you don't really know. But you can yeah, imagine the, the, that it's attached to the arm. The left the, hand. Yeah. Yeah, but, but but the right hand is definitely coming from the boob area. So use your wings to remove it from your light jacket and chew. <laughs> uh, okay, horse snake. <laughs> well, horse snake. Yeah, or maybe that's gum. Oh well, yeah, but still, it doesn't explain the, the fangs. Horses don't have fangs. <laughs> yes, I know it's very <laughs> disturbing to see a horse with fangs because um, they're so big anyway. You know, and the thought that those things can, like, well, I mean, they are dangerous, 
but yes, they, could, they could be more absolutely. dangerous. But, yeah, they, they were pointed. You know, I don't yeah. want pointed teeth in a horse. It that, was so well, that's bizarre. frightening because it also implies that they're meat eaters. And horses and being jacking. meat eaters are a little scary. <laughs> you've chewed, you've thrown away your loofah and, and gotten salad everywhere and procreated in a go kart, but now it's time for honorable mention. All right. Oh, God. How, how newborn, newborn can, can you, get? you get? Well, you look, you're oh. newborn, but you look old at the same time. <laughs> Some babies are wrinkly. That's not that wrinkly. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It's like baby uh, Gollum. Row your uh, flower scented deodorant goodbye. <laughs> Toss your nose brush in the trash and follow these steps for extreme grossness. How interesting. <laughs> it looks like something from Wallace and Gromit. It, it actually does now that you mentioned I didn't even think about that. Oh. Build up some allergic BO. When you get home from pollen practice or sneezing outside, skip showering. Dude, that's not pollen. That oh, is mold. No, that's mold. <laughs> that's so, so gross. Oh, my God. You have got mold so spores all over your face. You need to clean. <laughs> and don't forget to rain and chew at the same time. Aww. Like, I texted Patrick uh, yesterday, and I said, for some reason, one of the prompts you gave me gave me, like, tons of wiener dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know why, so I thought I should share all the cute wiener dogs. Oh, those were that, those are super cute. God guess. Save it for the next go kart ride on your way to school. Okay, I don't roll remember. the windows up and procreate. <laughs> I don't remember go kart rides being quite that exciting. <laughs> and this looks more like a four wheeler. It looks like it might be missing one of the tires in the back. And I don't think you need to expel that much gas over open flames. This looks like or a, drive over. This is like it's giving me vibes of either a boss in a video game or a uh, like a comic book villain. Use your wings to remove it from your life jacket and chew. <laughs> It looks like he has a jacket over his jacket that's made out of bubble gum. Yeah. Bubbles that but are all wings. stuck together. But it has, well, are they wings? They kind of look like wings, but they kind of also look like insect legs. Or claws. But, I mean, I just thought it was so weird. And that look it's on his fabulous, face. It's fabulous, right? Like... He's like, he's fa he knows he's fabulous. Look at that face. <laughs> okay, guess what? It's your turn. Well, okay. not tech. It's, it's Lady Shabuku's turn. Yes. Let's find out what she has to say. And now, Country Fried Fairy Tales with Mother Shabla Goose. Well, now, you recall we have left a story unfinished, and I reckon you're raring to hear the end of it. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Thelma Turkey found a recipe and asked for help. Quickly, Cornelius Crow was summoned to read the recipe, but the gossipy mockingbirds managed to summon a whole bunch of other forest critters as well. And that turned out to be quite fortunate. Was it? I guess you'll have to decide for yourselves. So Cornelius, he very importantly tells everybody, this is a recipe for hummingbird cake. Suddenly there was a loud ruckus up in the branches and a bunch of tiny hummingbirds. They were cheaping like crazy. Like, what's going on? He assured them that there were no real hummingbirds in this recipe and that it was just named for them. And they still were upset about it and Thelma Turkey looked at them very firmly and said, Have you ever heard of turkey and dressing? And they looked at her solemnly and she goes, Okay then, I don't want to hear anything else about the name of this cake. It's a cake? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Well, I need some ingredients. So, there goes Cornelius reading off these ingredients to everybody. He told them they needed some pecans and off settled, scuttled some squirrels. And then he said he needed some all-purpose flour. No telling what that's gonna get you, but a bunch of animals ran off to get some flour. And then they said something about baking soda. And the crow just looked at him and said, oh, that's the widow. And then he asked for a couple of other spices and some raccoons seemed to know exactly where to go for that. Then they asked for some mashed bananas and pineapples of all things. And, 
a few more raccoons ran off in a different direction. And then he said, I need three large eggs. And a couple of hens started clucking and bam, that was three eggs right then and there. They needed some oil as well. And well, a bear came dragging a big old thing of oil up. Like, like he just had it in his den or something. They had no idea. Then they asked for two kinds of sugar, white sugar and brown sugar. Well, the hummingbirds said they had something better than sugar and off they flew. Next thing you know, all these animals start coming back with their little concoctions. Well, some things came back with flour and other things came back with flowers. The pecans were shelled already. I don't know how that happened so quick, but squirrels are very efficient when they need to be. Believe you me. A whole entire pineapple came back and, well, after a little bit of jumping on it a little bit, they decided it was crushed up enough. Uh, and the bananas, well, they look kind of old and they were perfectly perfect for a hummingbird cake. Or so I hear. Well, there was a big old bucket and they put everything in that big old bucket and started stirring it around, stirring it around and realized they had no place to cook it. Well, the bear was still there. So he picked up the big old bucket and Mr. Cornelius led them all back to the widow's backyard. She saw this crew of animals showing up and you'd have thought she would run away in fright. But this wasn't the first time Cornelius had brought something her way. And so she took it all in stride. He showed her the recipe and she realized what they needed. So she dumped all their ingredients in a couple of pans and took them inside to her oven. And she told them to wait one hour. All the animals, they sat there excitedly waiting to see what exactly was going to come out. And next thing you know, the widow brings out this beautiful cake covered in flowers and icing and all sorts of things. And she sets it on a picnic table. And all the animals are oohing and aahing as they look at it. And then she cuts off a whole bunch of tiny slices for everybody. Now, yeah, there were some weird ingredients in there. And she said it didn't quite taste like she was used to, but it wasn't so bad, especially for animals making it. And you know what? It was good. They all liked it. And the moral of this story might just be, you gotta play to your strengths. If you can read, read. If you can cook, cook. And if you've got an oven, well, I guess you better let somebody use your oven. But not everybody can do everything. So we gotta work as a team. And that's just what happened. Now, what you think about that one? Well, everybody, we only got one more story for this season, and we're going to tell you the rest of the story about Cornelius Crow next time. Bye, y'all. Well, thank you for that story, Lady Shabligoo. That was wonderful. All right, but now it's my turn. I'm super excited. My Mad Lib tonight is called Zoo Boo. Please tell me I put a trip to the zoo on that one. Yes, you did. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> the Metropolitan Zoo used to be the happiest on the popcorn. <laughs> what the? <laughs> what is he holding? I don't know. There's another strange animal in the second room. Yes. And then there is, there are more monkeys. Oh, I see more back. monkeys. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> and it's like it did a vintage photo, which I thought was really interesting. <laughs> I love, I love the, 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 there's the one monkey in the front row, and it looks like it's really angry to be smushed between these two people. <laughs> yep. And then the other two over there are just like, what? It's like, so, or whatever it is. But after the ghost of the lion appeared in the gazelle habitat. Wow, that is so good. Isn't it cool? It's it's weird. It kind of it's kind of a little maybe a little Dolly-esque in the way things yeah. are shaped. They're not necessarily melting like he does in a lot of his stuff. But With that sort of those sort of clean lines, like super clean lines, everything is very straight. You know, the trees like, are straight. Look at the straight. bottoms of the clouds. Yeah, and the trees, the bottoms of the clouds are straight. That's another thing that makes me think of that. Uh, but yeah, but I just thought it was cool. It was. I was getting mostly just pictures of lions. That's <laughs> you put lion in a prompt, you could just get pictures of lions. Well, it's interesting because it, it, it's like the ghost in the darkness. Uh, they were like nameless lions, and one of them does look like it's got a very short man. The other one looks like it barely has one at all. The zoo became loudly scary. Oh my. Um, <laughs> so, this gives me anxiety of this. Yes, this is very terrifying. But also, it looks very fake. So this looks like an animatronic lion that steps forward in like a Universal Theaters ride. You know what I mean? Or Universal Studios ride. 
I'm, I'm going to try to believe that, but I have a lot of childhood trauma over thinking that large cats were going to eat me. Multiple dreams over the years. So. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, I haven't told you about the panther that used to stop me in my dreams. Did you um, did you read the Velt when you were too young? So the lion started by excitedly running the feathers off the tropical tigers in the snake house. I'm excitedly running! <laughs> well, <laughs> that is so bizarre. <laughs> And it's like it's like he's trying to scare the feathers off those ti tropical tigers. So he's standing on his hind legs and going, oh, booga, 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 booga. And then <laughs> there's a lot of anatomical issues there that I'm going to uh, chalk up to like abstraction as art. <laughs> yeah, the head's kind of facing the wrong way. It seems like. Unless that's not its tail, and then there's that. So. <laughs> then it scared the zoo's smelly tortoise. Oh boy, another <laughs> slightly maintained animal that has horrible fangs. Yes, uh, but oddly, only one on the bottom jaw. So I don't know. Well, one we fell remember out we or... had that creature one time that had three teeth along the top. Yes, that was interesting. One on each side and one in the center. That was really weird. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know if it's just yawning or if the, the little girl is about to be eaten. It seems more like she's she's like looking in his mouth for something. Maybe she's like those uh, those crocodile birds or whatever that like pick things out of their teeth. <laughs> he just has a little girl who does it for him. <laughs> it's a strange. It's a really strange thought. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is. After that night, the turtle didn't peek its hooves out of its shell for four whole weeks, but he donned a fine set of armor. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> um, also, some anatomical issues there, but we're going to. Right. Because at first I thought there was a body continuing further below. No, then I realized it's just, no, that's the end of the shell. It's, it's the turtle, yeah. So he's, he's grown very long human-like arms now, though. But just no lower body. The lower body is still just a turtle. <laughs> well, perhaps the, that's like some kind of prosthesis that gives him like more human. But he looks a lot like a sea turtle in the head, which is absolutely cute. Next, the lion started haunting the giraffe paddock keepers as they were drinking alpaca spit in the break room. Oh God, I was literally <laughs> drinking when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't alpaca spit, was it? No, it, no, it's clearly Canadian. Zero. Okay, good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this this is uh, this is their reaction to uh, you're drinking alpaca spit. What? <laughs> but it's a giraffe keep face. Yes, yes, the giraffe. <laughs> exactly. Things are falling everywhere. <laughs> Finally, a ghost zoo veterinarian was hired to chew the ghost's cud. Oh. <laughs> oh gosh. He's a ghost zoo veterinarian. He takes care of ghost animals at the ghost zoo. <laughs> and he chews their ghost cuds. And cud? he chews their what? ghost cuds apparently. Yeah, I thought this was cool. It's like something from a comic of in and, and yeah, you think it, of a character that is a ghost veterinarian. It's like what an interesting idea that is for a character. A ghost veterinarian. He takes care of ghost pets, or ghost zoo veterinarian. Takes care of, care of all the ghosts at the zoo, uh, of the animals. Cool, huh? That'd be a right? She set up lots of booby lemurs all over the zoo, and here are the booby lemurs. They look sort of like kangaroos. <laughs> some of Not them have a lot like lemurs. Yeah, some of them's heads are very nimble, can turn very far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, lemurs, I think, do have a pretty good rank. Like, I think they can go, or their cousins can almost go all the way back. I think eye eyes can turn theirs almost all the way back. But uh, these are ghost lemurs, or no? No, no. It's just, these are these are booby lemurs because this is the ghost. Apparently, it's a ghost zoo veterinarian, but they're trying to hunt the ghosts. So they're setting up booby lemurs all over the zoo. Also, she even had a special electromagnetic park bench that she used to see ghosts in the dark. Wow. <laughs> Is that Julianne Moore? <laughs> but it's, that... it's 
it's very tall, first of all. It's very tall, which is a little creepy. But it looks like an art installment, almost. Like a Halloween art installment with lighting from underneath. Like yeah. a, the ghost that looms over the bench. Could be part so of a, bench, a local folklore. I, I love this bench. I'm not quite sure how you can make wood electromagnetic unless there's like stuff in the wood. Yeah, there has to be something inside of it. But uh, I want this bench. Now the bench looks really nice. looks very comfy. But no matter what she tried, the lion always bunched through her fingers. Okay. <laughs> I don't well, think she, she doesn't seem too worried about it. Well, he munched through them. I don't think he was chewing her fingers. I think she was like trying to clean, and he's just like chewing whatever his, you know, <laughs> while she's doing her work. I mean, if she's a ghost veterinarian, though, that's true. You know. <laughs> that's true. She may be used to this sort of thing. That is, until she put some bamboo out as bait. It's interesting that it got, when I had bamboo in the prompt, everything got very Asian. Well, I mean... And it makes sense. sense. It makes sense. But I just thought it was interesting that the word bamboo made everything have sort of an Asian look to it. Because this was like one of many images that I got that had this sort of look to it. So... But she looks is, like she's sort of stuck there because the bamboo, it looks like it's grown through her little boat. Which is totally <laughs> <she's>, possible. <laughs> and she's kind of stuck. So much for the park ranger of the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is totally a dude in a mask. Yeah, because he has two rows of teeth. <laughs> so one's his real teeth and the other one's the fake teeth that are on the mask. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> it looks like something from like Andy Griffith's show or Yes, Lady exactly. Mash. It also looks very period, like it looks vintage, like mm-hmm. the first picture did, which I thought yeah. was interesting. That's so funny. So that is it for the Mad Lib. Would you like to see some honorable mentions? Nah, not today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Metro- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the Metropolitan Zoo used to be the happiest on the popcorn. Oh, that! <laughs> and what's up with these hillbilly giraffes? <laughs> I don't know. They're super happy though. <laughs> the zoo be- the zoo became loudly scary. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's all her. We're good. <laughs> like, uh, but we've got two zebras that are flying. It looks like several seals or walruses. <laughs> There's some dog things. First of all, everything looks photoshopped. Every <laughs> single thing in this picture looks photoshopped. <laughs> it's not even subtle. <laughs> but the, <laughs> the things right next to her in the background, they remind me of those weird, weird flash animations that you used to find on the internet of like animals like morphing around and turning into each other and and oh man if i can find one i'm sure they're on youtube i'll need to look for some of those and see if i can remember what they were called but that's what they remind me of the loudly scary zoo starring tara reed but they're (laughs) like they're not fighting they're together they're like together there she's like on the hunt with them (laughs) It's wild. But look how it also looks like it's look. becoming. Yeah, it looks like it's becoming like ghostly or sp- spectral in the background or misty. I'm like, are you sure this isn't the lion? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no! Uh, finally, a ghost zoo veterinarian was hired to chew the ghost's cud. <laughs> so I guess he's the ghost veterinarian and. I don't know. It looks like it's very. It looks like a very, very evil Santa. Or like leprechaun. Oh yeah, a garden gnome, evil garden gnome. And that is it. That is it for my Mad Lib. Well, I feel sufficiently grossed out. I don't know about you. Uh, and I think yours is grosser than mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but that's going to be it for us tonight. Thank you guys for coming in and watching. And thank you for uh, hosting this with me, Brent. This was a lot of fun. Make sure you click on like and subscribe before you leave. And we'll see you guys on Thursday. Like and subscribe. The algorithm demands it.